I've been playing quite a bit of the new Crash Team Racing, and during that time I've had several questions about the specifics of the more advanced game mechanics. Things like exactly how much reserves do you get from every kind of boost, or how much faster is it to have blue fire over your normal speed. This is a technical dive into the speed and reserve system of CTR Nitro Fueled. If you want to know how I got these results, I explain my testing methodology at the end of the video. I've also put every question and answer in the description for easy reference. If you're not familiar with speed and reserves in CTR, then here's a quick explanation. You can think of reserves as a timer that's always counting down. Every boost you get adds a little bit to this timer. Things like drift boosts, jump boosts, hitting turbo pads, and using certain items. As long as you have reserves, you will maintain your speed and your speed will be upgraded when you hit a turbo pad. Once your reserves run out, then you lose your speed. So exactly how much reserves do you get from each drift boost? All engine classes get the same amount of reserves from drift boosting, except for the drift class which gets slightly more. There are 15 frames on which you can boost, starting from the frame when black smoke first comes out of your exhaust. Pressing the boost button during this frame gives you 0.4 seconds of reserves, while pressing it during the last frame of black smoke will give you 1.77 seconds. Here are the graphs for how many seconds of reserves you get depending on when you boost, as well as the equation for each. Note that the equations are only valid for frames 1 through 14, since boosting on frame 14 and 15 gives the same amount of reserves. This might actually be a bug, considering that if you hit boost on the frame right before black smoke appears, the boost meter shows you got a boost, but you don't get any reserves. Beanox might have intended that the smallest boost would give you 0.3 seconds of reserves rather than 0.405. The minimum perfect boost is on frame 9 or higher and only gives 70% of the maximum amount of reserves you can get from a boost. This is why you should always try to boost when the meter is as high as possible. Is it better to do multiple smaller boosts or one large boost? You should always do fewer larger boosts rather than more small ones. In the time it takes to do three small boosts, you could do two big boosts instead and have more than double the reserves left over at the end. You should also try to chain two or three boosts rather than doing single boosts. It takes a long time to start a new drift boost, but little time to do the next ones. How much reserves do you get from jump boosts? If your jump was at least 0.66 seconds but below 1.5 seconds, you get 1.1 seconds of reserves. If your jump was 1.5 seconds or longer, you get 1.43 seconds. It's hard to build reserves with jump boosts since the amount they give you basically just makes up for the time spent doing the jump. There is a technique that's most likely a bug called drop boosts or stored hang time. If you get a jump boost and drift when you land, and then go off another ramp, you can let go of the jump button while in the air and press it again before you land in order to get the same jump boost again without actually jumping. This can be useful in a lot of scenarios to get some extra reserves. How much reserves do you get from turbo pads? There's no one answer to this since every track is different and even turbo pads within the same track give you different amounts of reserves. However, most turbo pads that are placed right before jumps are made to give you just a little less reserves than the time it takes to do the jump, so you can't maintain fire when you hit the ground. Do a decent boost right before or during the jump and you'll be good. There are some exceptions to this, such as many of the turbo pads in Electron Avenue. What do the turbo strips do to your reserves? In Electron Avenue and Engine Labs, there are long turbo strips that give you fire as long as you're driving on them. They give you a small amount of reserves, but then keep your reserves from draining at all as long as you're touching them. As a side note, on the first strips in Electron Avenue, jumping makes it look like you're getting extra reserves, but you're actually not. You need to leave the turbo strip and touch it again to get more. Does U-turning or driving through grass deplete your reserves faster? They both will slow you down, but neither affects your reserves. I am going to discuss the reserves you get from items, as well as the starting boosts, but first we need to talk about the various levels of speed you can have in this game. There's no absolute reference for how fast you're actually going in CTR, so all speeds will be shown as a percentage increase over your base speed. Your base speed is how fast you go when you just hold the gas button with no boosting or turbos, so a 100% increase would mean you're going twice as fast as normal. What speed can you get from drift boosts? You can get different levels of speed from chaining 1, 2, or 3 boosts. 1 boost is 17.7% faster than base speed, 2 is 20.7, and 3 is 23.7. In practice, you'll never encounter 1 boost fire for very long, since in order to stay at that level you'd need to be continuously doing only single boosts. 
The moment you do two boosts, your speed will go up. What speed do turbo pads give you? There are two types of turbo pads, I'll call them yellow fire pads and blue fire pads. Yellow fire pads are your standard turbo pads placed on almost every track. These are all 33% faster than base speed. Blue fire pad speed is actually different on every track, and many tracks even have multiple levels of blue fire. It's a pain to test this for every track, so I didn't, but here's the speeds for the couple tracks I did look at. Engine Labs has two levels of fire. The slower one is 41% faster, and you get it from the long blue tunnel. The blue fire pad right before the tunnel gives you plus 50%. Twilight Tour has two levels as well. The first one, about halfway through the course, is plus 50%. The second one is on top of the market stand near the end and is plus 75%. Deep Sea Driving has the fastest blue fire I measured. It also has two levels, but I only tested the faster one. It's plus 83%, which is almost double your base speed. What speed and reserves do items give you? There are two items that give you reserves and change your speed, the turbo and the super engine. Both juiced and unjuiced versions of the turbo will give you 2.9 seconds of reserves. The unjuiced one's speed is 22%, and the juiced one is 32%. These are just a bit slower than 3 boost fire and yellow fire respectively. The super engine acts like the turbo strips in that it keeps your reserves from draining while you're using it. An unjuiced one will give you 19% speed and lasts for 8 seconds. A juiced one gives 37% and lasts for 11 seconds. This is actually the slowest blue fire in the game, only a few percent faster than yellow fire. The problem with the super engine is that once it runs out or you let go of the gas, you will lose all your reserves. To prevent this from happening, you need to get a higher level of speed than the super engine before it runs out. You also get an extra half second of reserves when you do. This is easy for the unjuiced one since you just need two boost fire or better. For the juiced one, you need to hit any blue fire pad. If you have a juiced super engine and you're on a track with no blue fire, you can let go of the gas and then use the item. Keep boosting to maintain your reserves and the item will run out without affecting you. There is a major bug with this item. Once your speed is above the super engine, then every time you let go of and press the gas, you will get an extra 8.5 or 11.5 seconds of reserves. You can get enough to finish an entire race by doing this. What speed and reserves do you get from start boosts? Your starting boost is determined by how full the boost meter is when the light turns green. You need to rev at least three times in order for the meter to fill up completely. The speed you get is barely higher than your base speed, only one, two, or three percent faster for one, two, or three revs. The main advantage is that it brings you up to speed almost instantly. The difference in reserves is significant though. One rev gives you 0.87 seconds of reserves, two revs gives 1.17, and 3 gives 1.57. Does revving a lot at the start make any difference? If you've seen many videos of CTR gameplay, you've probably noticed people revving a lot right before the race starts. This doesn't give you any extra reserves or speed, it's just for show. The only thing that affects your start boost is how high the meter is. What speed do you get from different jump times? While you only get fixed amounts of reserves from different jump times, the speed you get when you land is actually variable. This is a little hard to test so my numbers aren't very accurate, but you get about 16% speed for the minimum jump boost, up to about 26% for 186 or above. How much faster is it to have 10 Wumpa Fruit? When you have 10 Wumpa Fruit, your speed is increased by 1% on top of whatever speed level you already have. So if you had yellow fire, you'd now be 34% faster than base speed instead of 33. 1% doesn't sound like very much, but over the course of a 2 minute race, that would equate to being 1.2 seconds faster, which is pretty significant. Note that having 1 to 9 Wumpas does not give you any extra speed. You need to have all 10 in order to get the 1% increase. Is your speed in time trials equivalent to having 10 Wumpa fruit or none? Time trial speed is equivalent to having no Wumpas. And finally, how much slower are you when not holding the gas? This may seem like a silly question because you'd expect to stop moving if you let go of the gas. However, as long as you have reserves, your cart will keep going automatically. This is about 1% slower than if you're holding the gas. So how did I figure all this out? 
All these tests are essentially just timing how long it takes something to happen, such as how long reserves last or how long it takes to drive between two points on the track. It's important to use the in-game timer to do this. I used to count frames manually for certain tests because it was easier, until I realized that sometimes my capture software would drop a frame and it would screw up my results. Measuring reserves is fairly straightforward. The classic cart has small exhaust pipes on the back that spit out fire on the first frame you get a new boost. This is when your reserves start. On the frame after your reserves run out, the needle on the speedometer will drop a bit. Take the timestamp of the frame that the needle dropped and subtract the timestamp of the frame when the fire appeared. Dividing this by 0.0333 seconds, which is how long a frame is at 30 FPS, and rounding up or down gives you the whole number of frames of reserves. However, this is slightly higher than the actual number. If the needle dropped by only a little bit compared to the next frames, then you subtract, say, 0.2 frames. If it dropped a lot, as much as it does on the next frames, then you subtract nearly a whole frame. Multiply the end result by 0.0333 to convert back to seconds. The logic behind the needle drop is this. When rendering this new frame, the game checks how long ago your reserves ran out and lowers your speed accordingly. If they ran out a long time ago, almost a frame ago, then your speedometer will drop a lot more than if they only ran out recently. Measuring speed is much more annoying and not as accurate. You first need to find a flat, straight area on the track with stationary reference points on the ground, like lines or patterns. The longer an area you can find, the more accurate your number will be. You need to drive through this area without turning or changing speed, and count the number of frames between when your cart passes by two points. Subtract the timestamp your wheel touches the start point from when it touches the end point, divide by 0.0333, round up to the nearest frame, and that's your frame count. Often your wheel won't land exactly on your reference points, so you need to guess about how much of a frame to add or subtract. On any track you want to measure speed, you first have to measure your base speed, since that's the only reference point we have. Do several runs and average them together. They should all be well within a frame of each other. Measure your base speed, and then the other speed you want to check, and divide your base speed frames by your higher speed frames. This will give you the percentage increase in speed. Well, that's all the CTR research I've got for you. I hope you found this video informative, and thank you for watching.